Hi friends, welcome back. In the last chapter of static timing analysis series, we get to know about the second characteristic of a timing arc, which is unitness. So there we saw that what is unitness and what are the different types of unitness a timing arc can have. So there we saw that there are three types of unitness a timing arc can have and which are positive unitness, negative unitness and non-unit. Now in this video we are going to cover the third characteristic of a timing arc which is slew. So here we are going to see that what is slew and how it is used to calculate the delay. So if you remember in one of our previous video or, or particularly the video where we discussed about the delay characteristic of a timing arc. So there we saw that the delay is basically um, a component of two things which is transition delay plus intrinsic delay of a cell. So the transition delay is basically calculated based on the slew parameters. So in this particular video, we are going to cover everything about the slew. So let's get started. So the transition delay is basically defined as the time taken by a signal to rise from 20% to 80% of its maximum value or it is also known as a rise time. So when a signal transitions from 0 to 100% then the time it takes from 20% to 80% of rising is nothing called but a transition delay. And the rate at which the transition happens basically is called a slew. So slew is basically a rate of transition measured in volts per nanosecond. So hope this is clear. Similarly, the fold time. The fold time for a particular signal is also measured between 80% of its maximum value to 20%. So when the signal transitions from high to low or during full time, the value between 100% of its value to the 20% of its of its full value. So that delay is basically nothing but a full delay. So here to remember the slew is basically the rate of transition in volts per nanosecond. And the transition time basically used for delay calculations are based on the timing library. As I earlier said that the slew information, uh, the, the delay information from the timing library for a particular timing arc is basically uh, calculated. The transition time for the timing arc is basically calculated based on the some slew parameters which are present in the timing library. So we will going to see what are all those things present in the timing library and how the STA tool uses those informations to basically calculate the transition time. Okay, now let's understand this slew in more details in the next slide. So here if you see then there is a signal which is transitioning from low to high which is a input signal so just suppose we have a cell and it has an input signal and, and that input signal is basically transitioning from low to high and the output signal of that cell is also transitioning from low to high so basically we can tell that this characteristic looks like a buffer characteristic okay now what happens is when the signal transitions from low to high so this is the this is the curve and here if you see then this is the 10 percent value and this is the 90 percent value so as I, in the previous slide as i said that the transition time between 20 percent to uh, 80 percent so it sometimes it is like from 10 percent to 90 percent also uh, uh, can be taken so it completely depends on uh, the user uh, basically in uh, which window he wants to uh, take the delay okay so here in these examples we have taken uh, the delay calculations uh, 
between 10% to 90% of the signal transition. So this is here the 10% value of the signal and here it is the 90% value of the signal. Okay, so here if you see that when signal takes time to rise 10%, so the time taken between the signal rises from 10% to 90% is nothing but input slew. So the rate of transition, the rate of transition in volts per nanosecond, so this is the time axis and this is the voltage axis. So volts per nanosecond is nothing but the input slew rate. Okay, so here if you see this is the slew rate and the time. So when we get this, this, this becomes a kind of a, a triangle where we know. So the rate here basically will become this value by this value. Correct. So this is the slew rate. Sometimes this input slew can also be referred as a uh, transition delay, input transition delay, because uh, the, the slew rate is nothing but a uh, rate of uh, change of the transition and the transition delay is nothing but this value so this basically uh, from the input slew uh, we can calculate this delay as well what is the delay because what is this delay so this is our input slew okay now if you see at the output side the output transition time so when the output falls from 90 percent to the 10 percent Okay, so here the rate of change of the output signal in volts per nanosecond is nothing but called a output slew. So this value is nothing but the output delay. So sometimes we, we can also refer that output slew. So out, sometimes uh, they can call it as output slew. So if the output slew is given, we can basically, uh, uh, from there we can basically interpret what is the output delay. Okay, so now let's see how STA tool calculates the input transition time using slew. Okay, so the STA tool basically uses the slew threshold values, and the slew threshold values are basically defined in the timing library. Okay, so for example, for the rise time in the timing library, there are two uh, values given which is slew lower th threshold percentage rise so here if you see the lower threshold percentage rise 20 percent it means that we have to take the lower uh, rise from 20 percent of the signals maximum value and the upper value is 80 percent so that so basically we have to here get the transition line between 20 percent to 80 percent of a signal transition and similarly, we will see in the time li library that there are slew lower threshold percentage full as well. So here you see the, the rise word and in the full condition you will see the full. So that will signify that uh, the full transition times in which window we have to take care. So let's understand it little bit more from the time library perspective. So in the time library, they will give these values, slew lower threshold percentage fall and uh, uh, slew upper threshold percentage fall. So this is signal is falling here and here it is rising. So here you will see the slew lower threshold percentage rise and upper. So this value 20% or if it is 10% or 30%, it will completely come from the timing library information. And then the value between 80% to 20% falling, this is nothing but the fall transition. So, this delay will be calculated by, based on the slew, which is given uh, the slew uh, range window. So, here the window is given between 20 to, uh, 80 to 24 fall and 20 to 84 rise. So, based on these values, the tool will calculate the transition time. Okay. So this is how this in the information is provided in the timing library. So if you see here, slew lower threshold percentage, uh, upper threshold percentage rise, then slew D rate factor, then this is the input transition percentage fold. So this is basically uh, for the, um, so if you see here in our this previous diagram, 
this is the 50 percent uh, of the signal uh, value so between 50 percent of input to 50 percent of output this is nothing nothing but the propagation delay and this propagation delay is nothing but the cell delay okay so the cell delay is basically calculated based on 50 percent input to 50 percent of output so in in which the delay will be basically component of this transition time plus the intrinsic cell delay. So here all this information is provided in the time. So this this is basically uh, a timing library information. So here you will see the slew which is given for the uh, rising edge and as well as given for the falling edge and as well as the threshold percentage for the pro propagation delay also uh, the input threshold percentage for 50 percent and uh, output threshold percentage is percent is given. So now how the STA tool based on these values how the STA tool will calculate. So basically the slew are typically measured in the small voltage range like 40 to 50 percent. So why why the reason they are uh, calculated for a small range each because if you see from 20 to 80 percent the line is not linear here. So it is difficult basically to uh, calculate the slew. But if you take a small portion of that uh, lines, we can that that line will be more linear. Correct. So when that line is more linear, it is easy to it is easy to get the slew, the rate of change. And then we can normalize the bigger window, which is twenty to eighty percent, by using a small window slew rate. Uh, value. So, for example, from 40 to 60 percent or a 20 percent swing, the slew is measured 0 0.10. Okay. Now, for a window of 20 to 80 percent, how we can say that for a 20 to 80 percent, which is 60 percent swing, 80 to my 80 minus 20, which is 60 percent. So, 60 percent divided by the small window swing and multiplied by 0 0.10. So, it will give a swing of 20 to 80 percent okay so this is basically uh, uh, will be your uh, slew for a 60 percent swing window which is 20 to 80 percent okay now let's uh, a practical example here uh, to calculate the uh, transition time so here important uh, thing to note here, here is the ST tool reads the output transition time from the cell library and use it as the input transition time to the next cell in the path because there are multiple cells connected right so one cell output will become second cells input so one cells output transition is nothing but second cells input transition correct so here in the timing library actually we are given input transition okay okay cell so based on input transition and the output of that cell will determine the output transition time. So remember here the output load is nothing but some caps, some capacitors. So based on that capacitor value actually the output transition will vary because if, if, if the load value is going some more, uh, for example it is, it is for a x value the transition time is uh, uh, a, 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 just for example a number so for a load value of 2 watts the output transition time is going to be increased because now the load has increased so to charge that load uh, it will need more time so the transitions will be uh, the transition is going to be uh, uh, more slow and hence the transition time will increase so here if you see in the timing information right for, for example this is rise transition so for rise transitions there are two values given these, these three values uh, which are always given in, in a timing library the first value is index one and this index one value is nothing but slew value okay so this index one is always related to the slew and the index two value is nothing but the load value okay so now the input transitions the input transition was uh, this much and the cell load is this much so based on that we can easily calculate the 
output transition correct so here these three values are always given in the timing library which is index 1 which represents our slew value uh, input slew and the index 2 which represents the output load and this value is nothing but based on these values uh, the result of the uh, output transition is nothing but one of the value from this value uh, list so here for example input rise transition is given as 0 0.10 so input rise transition is nothing but this input slew so this input slew is given 0 0.10 and output load output load is given as 0 0.010 so here if you see index 1 this is a slew and this basically the values values is a matrix form so here the index 1 represents the row number and the index 2 represents the column number. So 0 0.10 that means this is the first row and 0 0.010 that means the second column. So if you go and see here this is a matrix first row, second row and so on. So first row and second column. This is the first row and this is the second column. This is the second column. So the output transition time is nothing but 0 0.1200 unit. So now, based on the input slew and the output load, output load, we are we, we are able to calculate the output transition time, and the output transition is nothing but going to be input to the next cell. So here we go to the next cell's input transition or input slew. So hope this is uh, very much clear to you on what is slew and how the STA tool uses the slew values to calculate the transition time. Uh, this concludes here uh, on the uh, third characteristics of a timing arc which is slew. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment sections. Also, if you like this video, please uh, hit the like button and also subscribe this channel and enable the notification. Thank you very much.